Welcome to the PLZ Soccer European Football Show. I'm your newest host, Patrick Mullen. Delighted to be joined by the reigning co-host, Blair Malloy. Blair, how are you doing? Yep, yep, still here. I'm the, <laughs> the, the midfield defensive stalwart that sees all these young forwards coming and going. And um, it's great to have you here. Great to have you here um, taking over the European Football Show. It's great to be here. But I think there's a few people, including myself, wondering why are we dressed in football shirts? So, Blair, why are we? And what yep, are so this is, this is a tradition here on the European Show now where we pick a football shirt from years gone by um, just to showcase one of the one of my favourite bits about Europe. European football and some of the gorgeous shirts over the years and we didn't plan this but for, <laughs> for our debut on the show we're wearing <laughs> Inter Milan tops yeah. um, this is a special number from I think 2001 season players like of Adriano Ronaldo Clarence Seedorf all in this fetching orange number and you've also went Inter Milan I went into Milan, but I went for a 1998 number. It's got a nice little story, a ground we've both been to, the San Siro. Yep. It's like a nice weekend away to Milan, went to this club store, and they had a few of their recent, more recent kind of kits, but I just wasn't a fan of the big Paramount yeah, sponsor yeah, yeah. in the middle, and the guy said to me, just follow me, took me to this amazing section of just retro football shirts. The, the Pirelli's a classic, oh. it's like one of those sponsors that actually might make the kit even better, it's and really nice of you to buy a shirt that's older than you, which, yeah, I know. which is good. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't bring a retro football shirt younger than me, I think yeah. that's not allowed. Yeah. Right, we've got to get straight into it, Blair. There's, some, there's been some great football this weekend, this last week. So talk us through the sides that have made it into the next round. Yes, so we have now got to the quarterfinals. We have got the teams that are there. Um, it will be Real Madrid, Barcelona and Atletico Madrid, all representing the Spanish sides. Manchester City and Arsenal there for the English contingent. Two German teams in there, Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich. And representing France, PSG. Obviously, we'll talk about Inter Milan, the side where we are repping a little bit later on. But but there's no Italian teams in the last days. That comes a bit of a surprise to you? I, th I think so, but the Serie A is a bit tricky. Look at Napoli last season. I know we're going to talk about them a bit later, but they were someone that people thought might be an underdog to win it last season. Yeah. Sitting in, what, eighth in the Serie A now yeah. and out of the Champions League. It's you quite incredible. One of, one of our own here, Lewis Ferguson, who's doing absolute wonders with Bologna this season, taking him up to fourth in the league. It really is wide open, and maybe at such a competitive league, it seems to have maybe been a little bit detrimental to their Champions League facts. But one team that's not found detrimental and are through to their first quarter final. Um, as Arsenal, they've not been into quarterfinals for I believe it's 16 years now. Since 2010. Yes, beat, 14 years. Yeah. They beat Porto back in back in 2010. Yeah. A little quiz for you: Who scored a hat trick on that day? Oh, I, I only know that just because it's been in the news this week. Nicholas Bentner, wow. the Lord Bentner, that he was. That. Uh, <laughs> I've not heard a blast in the past. Not heard him in a while. Um, but I, I thought it, I thought it was some game. I thought it was one of those really throwback. European knockout ties Porto came to do a job on Arsenal Arsenal were just playing they were attacking them from minute one I thought it was great entertainment and I, I'm going to expose myself a little bit I don't think I've watched 90 minutes or 120 minutes of a Champions League game that many times this season but that was a thoroughly enjoyable game and one man I think I have to point out is Martin Odegaard yeah I've got a lot of friends down south who said last season, he's the guy. He is one of the best attacking midfielders in the Premier League. And I never bought it. Yeah, I always yeah. said Bruno Fernandes, a bit of a Man United link coming through. He is by far a better player. But his performance the other night was, was sublime. That assist. That, that, assist, that assist. Alan McCoy's losing his mind in commentary over that assist. <laughs> but it, it was the first touch. It was the way he brought it into his body. And he just played it so, so delicately through. And, and I just thought it was incredible. A great finish from Leandro yeah, he, Trossard as well. Well. And I think um, the manager, Mikel Arteta, yeah. he said it was a magic night for the club. A magic night. Uh, what we expected, a really tough uh, opponent, really well organised, uh, very difficult to generate uh, constant momentum in the game and the way they play, and that's credit to them. Uh, we did it, we scored a beautiful goal. From there we insisted, um, probably in different ways, that the way the game allows as well. And it's a huge experience for us. We had to do it at the end uh, through the penalties. We prepared well, credit to the coaches as well, the when they've done it. And, and obviously for David, I had uh, some difficult moments to start, but he stood up with incredible personality and ambition. And at the end, he got rewarded in his moment. Yeah, it was a magical night for Arsenal. I think one person in particular that was a standout performer for me, not only Martin Odegaard, but David Rea, he has been under the spotlight all season. That situation with Aaron Ramsdale, that's now his 13th clean sheet in all competitions. And I think he is one of their star players that could take them 
all the way, I think, to the final of the Champions League. Yeah, it's really been the story, one of the stories of Arsenal this season. I remember when David Roya came in, it was a lot of people were asking, do they need them? Why do they need mm. them? If Aaron Ramsdale's in there already, England goalkeeper, obviously. But I think I think it's proven over time that he is Mikel Arteta's man. Yeah. And I think I think Arteta backs him to be number one. And nights like that, you can see why. And I, I know you may not have been here for it, but right very way at the back, at the start of this the whole show I tipped Arsenal as my dark horses for this competition wow. I got laughed out of town but I'm sticking by it you think they could go all the way this I, I think they could go all the way I'm taking them I'm, I'm sticking wow. with them I think the, the what they're exposed to in the Premier League every week is such high quality they have such a great squad why not I think what we'll do is we'll clip that and when the Champions League final takes place in Wembley this season yep. we'll come back to that clip and see how it ends. and when Arsenal are in it I'll be sitting here <laughs> laughing but another team who will fancy their chances of going all the way this year Bayern Munich Bayern Munich they are a side that have been heavily criticised all season a side that haven't not won the league in the last 10 seasons yeah. is it yeah. and suddenly they're 10 points behind Bayer Leverkusen undefeated all season for them it's just <laughs> I think they've been almost written off in the yeah, Champions yeah. League, but what a performance they had against Lazio. Yeah, I mean, obviously Maurizio Sarri leaving after mm. um, after a couple of bad results for Lazio. and I'm really glad for Harry Kane just to just to get a little bit of vindication again um, because he's had a great season. Individually, he's had a great season, but Bayern Munich, <laughs> this is a result I think they needed to give Harry Kane to warrant how great a season he's having. Um, and, I, and again, Bayern Munich, they're seasoned operators. They know how, what they're doing in European competition. I wouldn't put it past them just trundle along in this competition and be surprising people. There's actually been criticism of Harry Kane. People are actually saying that he is to be blamed for their non-success. That the, but when you've scored, I think that's harsh. What is it? I, I think, think it's 30 harsh. goals, 9 assists yeah, I think already in the season. I think to blame someone that's doing that is incredible. I think I think it's maybe been overwritten a little bit of how bad perhaps this Bayern Munich team is having a season or of a season. I think if they were to finish second this year, they're on course to be the highest placed, the highest points total for a second place finished ever in the Bundesliga. So it's not a not a bad season by all means, but um, yeah, I think I think there's bigger things than Harry Kane if you were to point the finger at anything. Why it's maybe not going the way for Bayern Munich this season. I think one goal I've got to talk about in this game, Matthias Delict will be absolutely furious. Yeah. That he has not had. I'm not sure. I didn't actually see it that much. If it was going to fly into the top corner, but Muller instinctive header head it in. But if that had gone into the top corner, probably one of the goals of the. That's season. a Thomas Muller special. He's been making a career <laughs> of that sort of thing. He sees an opportunity for a goal. He's going to take it. And you don't know, say fair play. I respect it. And it's actually impressive for Bayern. I was worried about them. Up Meccano red card in the first leg, and I think that was a bit harsh for him to be honest. He's kind of gone in for the ball, a penalty given. Yeah. I don't know. I think you've, you've got to kind of look at it. Is, it. is there any dangerous intent with that? And I think personally, I think he's just trying to make an attempt for the ball and he misses it. That's, it's as simple as that. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, they're doing well. And there's another team who have probably shone more than more people expected this season, Barcelona. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's really almost strange to say when we're talking about these kind of teams, Barcelona and Bayern Munich, you're a little bit surprised how well they're doing. Mm. Ten years ago, they were shoo-ins for the semi-finals, yeah. quarter-finals. But obviously, Barcelona, they've had, a, they've had their troubles in recent years, financial troubles on and off the pitch. Um, and it really struck me this, this week, the youth that they are bringing back into the team again, with Lamine Yamal and Paul Kubasi, um, they were playing a team, this is the first side in UEFA Champions League history to start players that were 17 years or below in a knockout game. And that's that's peak Barcelona for me. That's that's bringing guys through the academy. Lamine Yamal, I mean, I think he's a superstar already, um, that can really build build on this Barcelona team and be the core of them going forward. Well, the opening goal scorer as well, Lopez, he's a, he's a 2003 date of birth. He's only 20 years yeah, old, yeah. and now in the modern game of football, we're not talking about him as a young talent, no. but he's, it's incredible to see those three scoring goals, being that influential, and Barcelona, well, they, to be honest, they needed that. They yeah. needed some young talent, given that transfer troubles they've had, given those financial, they needed the academy to start coming through, and well, it's delivering on the biggest stage. But it also helps when you've got Robert Lewandowski up front, you know, you've got like, you've got a target man, you've got an icon of the modern game, and who better than these young players to be playing, feeding off of one of the best centre forwards the last 30, 40 years in my book anyway. I can't believe that he's only 35. Like yeah. I, was, I was looking at it and I was like, wow, you know, he scored 19 goals already this season, which yeah. by his book, he's probably not that happy about. But th I, th I thought he was like 41 to yeah. me. Like, he seems to be around scoring goals <laughs> for the last decade. Yeah, he's always going to be a danger man. And you look at Barcelona and all of a sudden it looks a bit more rosy. You know what I mean? They're into the quarterfinals now. And with those young players, the, the thing you always get with the young players, they've got no fear. 
You know, Laminia Mal will go and attack anybody. He will not care who he's playing against, and they Barcelona will go and play their game. And who knows? It might take them far. I think the big thing you've got to think about is is the draw this year feels more crucial than ever. If you could get a nice run into the semi final, into the final, yeah. a team could get a bit of momentum and go all the way, but there's so many strong teams that an Arsenal could draw a Man City, they're buying yeah, Munich yeah. to play Barcelona, yeah. and not too big. Big teams could go straight out, and then it's then it's game over. Yeah, it? I mean, you've seen it with last year, the way Inter Milan got to the final. And there was, on that side of the draw, it was almost the less of fancy teams. And Inter Milan, I think, used that to their advantage. They, they, they paved their way to the final and eventually came up against a Man City team who were just blow them out of the water. And, I mean, they've also made it through. And Erling Haaland, he is, he is a machine. I mean, a machine. We've run out of superlatives for him. He's now in the top 20 of Champions League goal scorers with 41 goals. He's 23. He's 23, Patrick. He's scored 41 uh, goals. It, it honestly breaks my heart a little bit. I watched uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer podcast the other week where he says Erling Haaland was in the door at Man United, but they wouldn't pay the £20 million. Pounds. Yeah. £20 million. You pounds. look at that now and think, what a bargain. What, like, what a deal. And, that, and fair enough, fair play to Borussia Dortmund for getting him in, moulding him, and Man City, what a player they've got in his hands. Oh, yeah, of course. And, like... Where can he go? That, that's the thing now. It's like, how, how high into the stratosphere can he go? I mean, I was looking at the all-time goal scorers in the Champions League. I think Ronaldo is out in front with 140, which is ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't really think we'll ever see those Ronaldo Messi numbers again because those seasons consistently were insane. But Ellen Haaland to have 41 goals already at 23. Realistically, he could play another 10, 12, maybe 15 years in the Champions League scoring goals at this rate. He could do anything he wants. We haven't seen it just yet, but it's injuries. I think if this, if Erling Haaland can avoid a big long-term injury, an ACL, and yeah. Achilles, there's, the sky's the limit. But the question for him, he'll have to decide, maybe not this summer, maybe next summer, is does he want to do that at Man City yeah. or go to a club that's got that stature, a yeah. Real Madrid? Is it a Real Madrid? Does he, link up? <laughs> <laughs> does, he, does he link up with Jude Bellingham, potentially Kylian Mbappe? You imagine a Real Madrid team with Haaland and Kylian Mbappe? You just stop football now. You know, that's it. It's game over. Maybe everyone might as well stop trying. What's a stronger three? Jude Bellingham, Mbappe and Haaland or that Neymar, Suarez and Messi of Barcelona? Oh, now you're talking. Now, now, only for what they already done, mm. you would have to see Messi just yeah. because that front three dominated world football. But I mean... What was, that, the, what was, the, what was the nickname? Like an SSN? MSN. MSN, yeah, 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 that yeah. was it. But I mean, if you, if you look at those players individually now, Bellingham and Bappe, Haaland, the three of the hottest properties in world football right now and up-and-coming properties. And it would be interesting to see to see where it goes. But um, another game I want to talk about from last night, Atletico Madrid 2, Inter Milan 1, 2 all on aggregate and Atletico win on penalties. Um, an interesting start that I've seen this week. Obviously, the Arsenal game went to penalties. That was a first penalty shootout and a knockout game in the Champions League since the 2016 final, which I thought was absolutely <laughs> incredible. A wild start. And then, like London buses, you wait ages for one and then two yeah. for ones. We get two in the same week um, and Atletico Madrid go through on penalties beating Inter Milan. A bit of a shock for me, I'll be honest. I I thought Inter Milan might have been one of the dark horses of this tournament this year. They're absolutely flying in Serie A. Like they look, they look a proper, proper side. And Latoro Martinez, the man who you would bet your house on scoring in front of Milan, he's the he's the main man there. He's in deal talks to sign a new deal, a multi-million pound contract, and he stepped up and he puts that he skies that penalty into Rose Ed, and you're thinking it's just one of those nights. I think they would have been one thing when they left the San Siro. I know they'd be happy. A Champions League night, you take a 1-0 win. But I think they would have been kicking themselves. You look at some of the chances, they could have, oh, they could have yeah. killed that game the off. The game could have been out of sight after the first leg. But I think you have to say, Diogo, Diogo Simeone, <laughs> that's the one. He is a manager, I rate, probably one of the highest in Europe. He doesn't get the credit he deserves, but he is, he is making this Atletico Madrid team quite special. Yeah, the, the job he's done there is, is unbelievable. Um, I mean... In his time there, they've now reached seven UEFA Champions League quarterfinals. And this is a club that before he arrived, in their entire history, had reached five. So he, in 12 years, yeah. has secured two more than he had done for the entire history before he got there. So just reading a bit up on him this morning, like 18 months before he came in, Atletico Madrid did win the Europa League in um, that famous final against Fulham. But they were, they were floundering when he got there. They were in a bit of disarray. The team that won the, Euro, the UEFA Cup, as it was back then, they had Diego Forlan, Sergio Aguero. But the time he came in, they were 10th in La Liga and they had just been knocked out of the Copa del Rey by third-tier Al 
Balbacete. So it shows you shows you where he's taking this team to now that Atletico Madrid are really considered the third force in Spain and consistently up there, consistently at the top of La Liga. He's he's guided them to two league titles, two Europa Leagues, a Copa del Rey, and also two losing Champions League finals. And I think he'll leave there as one of the best managers in their history. I feel like Atletico Madrid at the moment are in a kind of very similar stage to what Spurs are actually a, aspiring to be. You get a strong manager who kind of epitomises everything that, that club is about. You've got a brand new stadium, the Atletico Madrid Stadium. If you haven't been, you've got yeah, to go. Yeah. It's quite... It's quite special, and I think if you can have, like Ange Postacoglu, someone in there that can build a team, build everything around him from the kitchen staff to the yeah, players, yeah, yeah. you can do something quite special. And I think Diego Simeone and Atletico Madrid are someone to watch. I don't think they'll win it. I think there's too many strong teams in mm. there, but I could definitely see them progressing through the quarterfinals. It's a really interesting point you make because it's like it's completely alternating styles between a Postacoglu and a Simeone. But the idea of this figurehead of a statesman at that club, Simeone is now intrinsically linked with Atletico Madrid. You don't think of Atleti without thinking of Diego Simeone. And that goes all the way back to his time as a player there. In 1996, he won the league for them and the cup. So he has this long thread of history through that club. And... Like I said, he's one of the he's one of the best managers ever in their history, and I don't see him going anywhere soon because I just can't see him managing anyone else. He is Atleti through and through, and he'll always be their best ever manager. I think if you look at the very successful clubs, say in England, you've got a Pep Guardiola at Man City, Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. Look back to Sir Alex Ferguson at Man United. You've always got that figurehead who almost just feels like he's in control of everything that's going on at the club. They're not. There's nothing that can happen without them knowing about it, and I think you kind of need that security and that dominance from the manager to have success at any club yeah yeah definitely um and i think this week just to end on i i, I picked this out in the news this week that i thought was really 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 worth talking about it was eden hazard um who one of those players that i think that retired before his time or he went he went to real madrid and his career kind of dropped off a little bit and he was really he really had a it's a disappointing end to a career. Some talent. He was a great player. His time at Chelsea, his time at Lille, specifically when he was winning titles with Chelsea, when he led Lille to that League One title, it was absolutely incredible. And he has opened a new pitch yeah. in Lille this week for, for the young people of Lille to play on. And he, and he came out with this absolutely incredible quote. quote he says, <laughs> this is the Eden Hazard pitch. So no gym, no running, only playing football and breaking ankles. That's and personally, about. that is exactly that is what, what football about. is all about. I think that is the Eden Hazard way of playing football. I think during his peak, he was incredible, but he just he just wanted to play football. He yep. wasn't he wasn't that interested in all this other stuff. And I feel like once he went to Real Madrid, you you have to say his career didn't work as well as when he was peak at Chelsea. Yeah, but he's some talent, of course. And let's hope we see more performances like he used to put in in the rest of this Champions League. A little bit of exciting news I saw on the way here. The Scotland Euro 2024 kits are out now. Yep. For anyone that's getting excited, so just check them out. Yep, we are we are kit aficionados in here, so oh. no doubt we will be back giving you a review of the European <laughs> kits over the coming months. Well, that is all we have time for here on the European Football Show. We're glad you enjoyed it. And if you want to stay up to date with all of this and more, make sure you subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. We'll see you soon.